The Congress of Vienna in 1815 left Italy a number of kingdoms. And if we're talking about early attempts to unify Italy and make these several kingdoms one country, we can point to Giuseppe Mazzini, who in the 1830s founded a group called Young Italy. They did have brief success, and Mazzini is considered the heart of the Italian unification movement. But ultimately, the group was put down by France and Austria. Now, it should make sense to you that Italians wanted unification. I know it makes sense because you look at Italy and you say, oh, geographically, they're the boot. They should be one country. But keep in mind, culturally, they had the same language, the same dress, the same religion. They also had the same tradition. No matter where you went in any of the Italian states, you saw ruins of the ancient Roman Empire reminding you that you once were unified. And let's not forget that there are practical reasons for unification as well. Now, it's also important to note that there was an opposition force against Italian unification. In particular, Austria and France, as well as the Pope, opposed unification because they would have to give up land. It's also true that some kings wanted to keep their power. And just kind of FYI, I want to throw in there and familiarize you with the term Resurgimento, which is the Italian name for their nationalist movement. All right, so how does unification go down? The brains behind the movement is Count Cavillo Cavour, who was appointed by the man pictured on the left, Victor Emmanuel of Sardinia, to be prime minister in 1852. He believed in realpolitik. This is Cavour, just like Bismarck. So a lot of comparisons can be made of Bismarck and Germany and kind of their story of unification to Italian unification being similarly or, you know, orchestrated by Camillo Cavour of Sardinia. Where is Sardinia, you ask? Well, the Kingdom of Sardinia included Piedmont, Nice, and Savoy, as well as the island of Sardinia. Okay, so it's Piedmont, Nice, Savoy, and Sardinia. And it is important to recognize these. Now, Carvini, Car Cavour's plan for Sardinia to get all the other states to join with Sardinia and form it Italy was a threefold plan. Number one, Sardinia fights with Britain and France against Russia in the Crimean War. The reason he does this is just to get invited to the peace conference so he can kind of schmooze Napoleon and kind of become friends with Napoleon. He then makes a deal with Napoleon III of France, and he says to Napoleon, listen, I'm scared, we're little teeny Sardinia, we could use the protection of a great country like France, how about we give you Nice and Savoy, and they become part of France, which they are still part of France today, and in exchange, if perhaps Austria ever goes to war with us, you'll help us. Um, and then Cavour goes out and provokes a war with Austria. Okay, so, so they take some lands up north from Austria as a result of this 1859 war. Then in 1860, Cavour gives weapons and ships to Giuseppe Garibaldi, who's kind of the sword of the movement, and I'll show you his picture in a minute. And he sends him out to the boot, um, to Sicily and Naples and, and Rome and the other places. And Giuseppe, with his thousand red shirts, goes and, and kind of fights city by city by city and wins control of the territory. Then when he is successful, he's a man of his word and he gives that conquered territory back to Sardinia, um, which is really interesting. Uh, and here is a picture of Garibaldi, the sword of the Italian nationalist movement. Okay, lastly, what problems did Italy face? Um, Cavour dies, and the kind of the last piece of the puzzle is when Prussia falls, the, the last pieces that have been controlled by France. Um, the Vatican, however, opposes unification because the popes kind of see themselves as prisoners. In the north, you have big, wealthier cities. Um, in the south, you have more rural more peasant cities, and so there's these differences that cause problems, and there are anarchists running around turning to violence and sabotage.